Hello, BookTube. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth, and I'm going to let my cat Boots be the star of this show, as well as the books that I am either currently reading or hope to read this coming week, you know, between now and the end of January. I thought about getting ready and getting on camera, but I kind of thought about a quote from Phoebe from Friends, who one time said, I would if I could, but I don't want to. And so that really kind of reflects how I feel today about getting on camera. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to show you anything that I've already finished because I just did that and uploaded that super early this morning. And I've been vlogging all week, showing you what I was reading for Ribsat. And so now I am revisiting... Now he's shaking this stuff. Um, my books are in a swing that is in our backyard. So now that he has sufficiently shaken the swing, let's see if I can get it to to stop stop moving. I don't want to make you dizzy. Okay, so the stuff that's standing are the books that I have already started, and the books that are laying down are the ones that I have not started. And I hope to finish all of these this month with a couple of exceptions. And there's two books on the end that just represent a series I'm going to be starting that I don't have a physical copy of. So let's just start and go from left to right. So True Love and Homegrown Tomatoes by Julie L. Cannon is a book I started before Ribsat and I set it aside. I'm reading it in print. I set it aside for Ribsat. Uh, because it wasn't on my ribset shelf, and I am almost halfway done. Now you can see I've got some tabs, so I have basically tabbed the sections that um, I want to read each day to finish it by the end of the month. And the next one, The Castle of Lear by Lord Alexander, is the third book in the Chronicles of Prydain, and that one I have the least amount read in so far, and it will probably be the one that I put lower on the list of priorities, only because I think it's going to take me a little longer to read it, even though it's not as long as some of the others. Um, although it's a library book, so I'd kind of like to go ahead and get most of my library books done. So I don't know. It's only it's less than 200 pages. I should be able to do it, but I'm reading some other stuff. So um, then Toponymity is the book I was reading for Ribsat. I started it. It was on my Ribsat shelf, and it was just kind of dry. There is some attempts at humor by the author. It's not my type of humor, really, and I am about a third done with it. And so I went ahead and just tabbed it in 10 page sections. I've got about 100 pages left, but I figure if I can just read 10 or 12 pages a day, I can get it done. Then I am reading another clutter book that I've shown you before. It's a, more of a workbook by Cassandra Arson called, I think it's called The Declutter Challenge. I didn't bring it out here because I'm kind of at a standstill in it because the thing it's asking me to do next, I'm not quite ready to do in my in my tackling of the clutter of my house. So I had checked out this from the library earlier in the month, The Chaos Cure by Martha. Is it Siley or Silly? I don't know. Um, she's the fly lady, and this is a very easy book to read. I had kind of started skimming through it, but I started it over today, and I'm going to read 20 pages a day in it. It is just very easy to read. It's got a lot of illustrations, and I am motivated to read that. And then the next little book here has only got six chapters, and I went back and looked on my shelf because I knew I had some of these little Bruce Wilkinson books. This is actually written by his wife. It's by Darlene Marie Wilkinson. Now, I read in December, I reread Prayer of Jabez, and then in early January, I read Secrets of the Vine by Bruce Wilkinson. This is Secrets of the Vine for Women. And it's part of that same breakthrough series. And it just kind of made 
more sense to go ahead and read this one. I do have another Bruce Wilkinson book on my shelves that's another subject. But since I already read The Secrets of the Vine this month, I may as well go ahead and read this one next. It just seems to make sense. Now this next book I may not get finished. I probably won't get finished by the end of the month. But I wanted to have an ebook on the go and I did check it out from Hoopla on ebook. Even though I had this physical copy, I may have to get it sent back to the library. And I wanted to check out the ebook copy and just see if it would let me do text to voice on Hoopla and I I don't think it will. I can't figure out how to do it. So I'm probably going to just have to read and print, but it's already come in handy. I had my uh, I have it downloaded on my phone and my Kindle and Katie and I went to get smoothies around noon today and she sometimes gets mad at me if I carry a book so I just had it on my phone <laughs> and so we were standing there waiting because they've taken out all the chairs you can't sit and uh, she wasn't saying anything so I just pulled out my phone <laughs> and she looked over at me in a little bit she goes are you reading a book <laughs> and I was like yes <laughs> did you need to tell me something no I'm like okay then interrupt me if you need to tell me something so anyway I'm only on like chapter two and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun I'm reading it because this was the December pick for the book one cozies club that's hosted by die from dice's 19 hearts and then in my car I have started ready player two by Ernest Klein. I had kind of forgotten that there was a lot of foul language uh, at least in the first book I, I really don't remember but our children's librarian was reading this earlier in the month, or maybe it was in December. And I think she may have reread the first one before this one came out, or she was reading it for the first time. I, not, it, Yeah, she would have been rereading it. And she's like, I had forgotten there was a lot of bad language. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of forgot that too. So anyway, um, yeah, this one also has, just in the first disc, there's already been several F-bombs. So if that's not your thing... Um, and you can't overlook it, then you probably wouldn't want to pick up this book. But I really enjoyed the the whole idea of it and the whole pop culture aspect of it. And so I'm going to put up with the foul language and go ahead and listen to this. Even though I don't care for it and it makes me aggravated, especially when I'm listening in the car and Emily's with me in the car. You know, I don't want her thinking that that that's okay to say so usually when those words come up I'm like oh that's a bad word we don't say that I mean she's not verbal right now anyway but I would hate for her to all of a sudden start talking and then start you know spewing out all these horrible words so you know garbage in garbage out I don't want her to to you know have that stuff going in her brain so anyway um I may try to limit my listing of that when she's not with me in the car Okay, so now we have the books that I haven't started yet. I am going to be reading this one starting today with Krista from Books and Jams. And this is the last book in the Penderwick series, and I know we're both excited to finish up the series. And I mentioned to her, and I don't know for sure if we will or not, but I would love to do like a collab video with her on you know one of our channels where we kind of talk about this whole series. I think it would be a lot of fun. And I'm excited. So then this is a book I've had checked out from the library since December. It's on Hoopla. I just checked it out from Hoopla on audio. It's some novellas that are Amish Christmas themed. And so I'm looking forward to that. And then this, these next two are actually book club books for February. The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson is the pick for our regular literary book club and I'm looking forward to that. I've got it. I checked it out. I totally wasted a Hoopla borrow. I checked it on Hoopla forgetting that it's on Audible Plus and I am going to listen to some other stuff on Audible Plus but still I it was included in my free trial and there was no reason for me to waste a borrow on Hoopla when I already had it on Audible Plus. But anyway, uh, I was happy that House of Sand and Fog is also on Hoopla, on audio. I'm not sure how to say the author's name, so I will just let you read it there. And this is for our mystery book club. And so that was recommended by someone else. I don't know anything about it, and uh, I hope it's going to be good. Uh, if you know anything about House of Sand and Fog, let me know kind of what to expect. 
And then I haven't yet started the Midford Bedside Companion. I thought that I would just kind of read a section each month sort of to kind of read along and be supportive of the year in Mitford read along that some other awesome booktubers are doing this month or this year actually for the whole year and I'm just gonna start with the first section and read it for January that's the other books so let me show you the it's it's not sectioned out in um by the book like I originally thought it's in themes so this week I will read the introductory stuff and then that first section called a little world of our own the town of Mitford making Mitford real and there's 13 total sections so I'll pick the shortest two and read those in one month but for now since I've just got one week left in January I'll just read the first section and then the reason I have these laying out here is because on Audible Plus, they have almost this whole entire series. This is the Quilts of Love series. It's by multiple authors. It's by Abington Press, and I don't know anything about them. I don't know if they're faith-based or what, but these caught my attention at somewhere at some point, and I don't even know how I ended up seeing them on Audible Plus. But I've only got these two. I think this is book 12 and this is book 5. And our library doesn't even have a copy of the first one. I haven't gone so far as to search for any of the others. I just had these on my shelf. But um, almost the entire series is on Audible Plus. So it may be worth keeping Audible Plus for another month in order to just get through this series. Because I haven't started it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and start the first book which is by Carolyn Zane and I think it's called Beyond the Storm so that's what I'm going to be listening to this week and see how I like it and you know possibly go ahead and listen to some more of the series so that is pretty much what I am planning to read for this last week of January hopefully I can get all these finished with the exception of Christmas Cowbells I'm sure I won't finish that and I don't plan to finish Mitford Bedside Companion. I'm going to read on it all year. But everything else, I want to try to finish. Uh, everything that I've already started up there in that top row are all in print, except for Ready Player Two. That's on audio. And then everything down here is audio, except for the Mitford book and the Penderwicks. So it's a pretty good mix of audio and print books so hopefully i will do well and i will get all of these done so thank you so much for watching and i'll try to be back soon with another video and i will try to get in front of the camera that's all for this video i thank you so much and have a great day read a good book and god bless you